Hello everybody and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Uh, today we are going to look at our Ice Maker build from about a month ago uh, and look at how I have changed it uh, to reflect the sort of the, the new nerfs that have come to the Ice Maker. When I first made the video a month ago, uh, the Ice Maker was a much more powerful building. Now it's about one-fifth as good as it was before, uh, but it still is a very strong cooling option and I think is basically the cooling option that Clay intends for you to use uh, through the early to mid game. At some point you transition to steam turbines and that's probably the intended heat removal option for the mid to late game. And then in the very late game you can be venting materials that you don't care about into space and, and really kind of high-end projects using thermium. But in the early game, I expect that ice makers are where Clay kind of wants you to go. And so let's go ahead and look at just sort of an example build. Now this is a build that uses conveyor rail and uh, refined metal in the form of these metal tiles, which can be pretty expensive. And I'm kind of playing around with builds that are more basic. Um, a lot of the more basic builds, though, sort of one of the, the unfortunate realities of them is that they just require a lot more duplicate labor. Um, that one of the easiest ways to take advantage of the cooling of the ice makers uh, is to build temp shift plates made out of ice and use those to cool off various areas. Uh, but that requires a lot of duplicate labor, and this is aimed more as a build where you're, you've kind of transitioned away from using a lot of duplicate labor, and you kind of want to automate things a little bit more. And so we've been using conveyor rail, which is probably the the best and most efficient answer at the end of the day for how you deal with the uh, the cooling that's created by the ice makers. So, just to review the build for those who haven't seen the original video, we have on one end here a source of really hot stuff that we want to cool down, in this case oxygen at 95 degrees. This is assuming that you're running this, uh, you know, you're running 95 degree water through some sort of electrolyzer and you're getting 95 degree oxygen out and you need to cool it down somehow. We have that oxygen traveling through a heat exchanger, right? That's what all this uh, metal tile pipe, uh, or metal tile and pipe over here is. And then it's going to exit out into this area over here. Um, it's a counterflow heat exchanger, and the counterflow to this oxygen is the ice that we are producing from these ice makers. The ice maker is going to ship the ice through this conveyor rail up through here and then kind of zigzag it along through our heat exchanger. Uh, the big change between this current build and the build as it was posted a month ago is that I've replaced this uh, layer of tile, <coughs> excuse me, that used to be insulated tile. Uh, I've replaced it with metal tile because now the ice makers are going to generate a lot more heat themselves and need to be cooled down. I've also raised this uh, conveyor rail up. It was traveling underneath the floor before. Uh, I've replaced the floor with mesh tile in case there's any sort of melted ice that uh, occurs in this room, which wasn't really much of a concern before. This used to just be granite tile. And I've added a bunch of just granite temp shift plates. Uh, all around. These seem like decent places to put them. I don't think these temp, sh temp shift plates are strictly necessary. Um, I think maybe like this one going down here connecting with the cold end of the seat exchanger and sort of spreading out across the room is a good one. Uh, but you do have to worry about the temperature of this room a little bit now, especially since duplicates are going to be running around and doing stuff in it. Um, you know, this is sort of a place that you want to keep at least relatively cool. Um, and then I think the insulation that we kind of have around this area has become a little bit more important. Before it was just not really necessary. And I guess some of it still isn't very necessary in that this water is still, you know, 22, 23 degrees. Uh, right? This is, it basically stays at it's the same temperature that it was before. Uh, but you are going to get a little bit of heat bleed out of this room. So let me go ahead and turn this on. You can see it in action. Uh, looking at the shipping view, we see that uh, once ice gets produced by these ice makers, uh, and they don't really require much duplicate labor these days because they're just less efficient, basically, right? Ellie's just sitting here idling, waiting for these things to need to be refilled, which is nice because this, this whole system can be run off of just basically one duplicate every once in a while coming in here and manning these ice makers. Uh, but we'll see once the ice makers are done making their ice, it's just going to travel along this conveyor rail and up through our heat exchanger and exchange heat with this hot oxygen uh, that is coming through. We're getting a pretty good temperature reduction on the oxygen. It's going from 95 degrees Celsius to 12 degrees Celsius over here. Uh, how much oxygen you run through here is going to have a big impact on how cold you end up getting this. Also, uh, the choice of a counter flow heat exchanger is going to result in colder oxygen. If you're fine with warmer oxygen, um, you might just have a uh, sort of concurrent flow heat exchanger where uh, the uh, uh, the conveyor rail travels, you know, in the same path as the, the gas. 
But uh, ship it, going over to our shipping view here, you can see the ice traveling along and then it melts, right? This ice is coming along, going, 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 going. And at some point it's going to melt, right? And dump a bunch of cold water into this area. And so this is our temperature view. Um, every once in a while we're going to get some ice melting in our conveyor loaders, which is going to cool them down. And that's going to help keep this room nice and chilly. Uh, well, not that chilly. It's going to reach around 66 degrees or so. Um, some of this stuff can get pretty hot, but uh, the way I've built it right here it keeps it under 75 degrees so you don't have any sort of scalding risk for your duplicates that are going through here. And uh, yeah, this is basically the build. Um, conveyor rail, use, creating a counterflow heat exchanger. Uh, we're leaving that counterflow heat exchanger in thermal contact with our ice maker room so that this ice maker room can stay uh, cold enough to continue operating it. Um, this water down here is going to remain at around 22 degrees. Started off at 22 degrees. There's a little bit of kind of distribution of heat in the water because of where these temp shift plates come down and also because the water from this heat exchanger is emptying out back into here. Um, I guess one other change that I made from the original build is I replaced the, um, the dropper with just a conveyor bridge that loops back around because it seems less likely that the system is going to freeze up right now that the ice makers are less powerful. I'm less worried about that sort of failure state. Um, so I'm fine with sort of the system freezing up as it, as it were. Um, I have ways of you know, clearing that out if it's an issue. And this is just slightly more efficient in terms of the use of power with this auto sweeper. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this is a highly automated system, requires very little in the way of duplicate labor because the ice makers rarely require refilling uh, given their, their current state. And I have automation handling basically everything else. I'm tinkering around with builds that um, create a heat exchanger, not using conveyor rail, but instead using things like storage bins. Um, you would then need duplicates to deliver the ice to those storage bins. Um, but it would be at least something that wouldn't take much effort on your part. Whereas, you know, constantly queuing up orders for your duplicates to build temp shift plates made out of ice is kind of labor intensive on your end, right? It's, it's labor intensive on the dupes end, but it's also labor intensive in terms of it takes up a lot of your attention. Um, doing something with a uh, storage bin system would still use a lot of duplicate labor, unfortunately, but it would um, not take much of your attention. It, was a, it would be a system that you can kind of just leave and forget, right? So I'm playing around with that, but at the end of the day, I think there's no real way to beat the efficiency of uh, these conveyor rails. That If you have access to um, a duplicate that can build conveyor rail, if you have the research necessary to get there, uh, can conveyor rails are going to be... Where are conveyor rails now in the list of things? Conveyor rails are... Wow, I probably should have looked at this before I made the video. Um, Where are conveyor rails? Automation is down here. They've moved everything around and now I'm totally lost. Um, Where did they put... Oh, so solid transport up here. So you need to get to here in terms of your research, right? Which is kind of a tall order. And you need to also have a duplicate that is capable of mechatronics engineering to build the conveyor rail. So this is not quite the early game system that some people are looking for. And again, I'm tinkering around with that, but um, this is a pretty easy answer. This is a very easy room to set up. Um, in this case, I've made it uh, fit onto a you know set of four by 20 rooms. Um, you could make this 4 by 16 if you wanted to, just lop off a couple ice makers in this build, right? Have, say, three ice makers per conveyor loader. Um, the reason I'm doing it this way is because then I have the auto sweeper covering all of this area. I'm kind of getting the maximum efficiency out of an auto sweeper. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty neat build. Uh, pretty easy to make once you've kind of got the uh, materials to, to make it. Right? It's very easy to do in survival. And we're taking a bunch of 95 degree oxygen and turning it into 12, 13 degree oxygen, right? Pretty pretty chilly, pretty cold. Um, that's basically it, right? This room doesn't really overheat. It's gonna stay around uh, like 60 degrees on this end, so it is gonna get kind of hot, um, but the cooling provided by this heat exchanger is gonna keep it from going too high, and uh, that's it. So if you're looking for a cooling solution, uh, and I've been directing you to the old ice maker video that I made in the past, uh, well, now you have sort of an updated version, 
Again, not much has changed. We've basically just taken some of, a lot of the cooling that was previously going into this heat exchanger and using it for our uh, ice maker room. And then we're just not putting as much thermal mass through it to be cooled. Right before we were cooling down uh, a line of hydrogen and a line of crude oil that were both at 70 degrees down to like 20 degrees. Um, the ice maker is a less powerful building. You're going to kind of have to rein in your expectations, but the system can be scaled up pretty easily as well. You could just make more ice makers, make a bigger heat exchanger. Um, if you're worried kind of about the, uh, the temperatures in this room, right, you can add more heat exchange with the ice in this room, right? Here, I'm kind of just accepting that this room is going to be insulated and I care mostly about the temperature of the oxygen that's coming out. So that's where a lot of our cooling is going, but uh, you could, you know, have more temp shift plates. You could have more of this be insulated, right? And that way the hot end of the heat exchanger is not exposed to this room. That would also keep the temperatures in this room down a little bit. There are options for you to tweak this particular build, but I think um, I'll kind of leave that up to you guys. This build works perfectly fine. And I'm gonna be focusing on a build that doesn't involve conveyor rail. That way you don't have to go that far down on the research tree in order to get this stuff up and running. Um, I think that's it for now. The video's gone longer than it needed to, but uh, just want to show you guys an update for all of you uh, out there wondering how you can cool down your base, uh, even if you have really hot stuff that you need to cool down. And uh, that's it for this episode. I'll catch you guys next time.